If you are looking for a mid to high end component speaker set for your next car audio system that has stellar mid bass performance and smooth highs with an incredible off axis response, you're going to want these. Jail Audio's newest speaker line falls between the existing mid-level C3s and the high-end C7s, offering us high-end performance at an incredible value. Today, my friends, we have our hands on that new speaker line, the Jail Audio C6 component speakers. What do these look like up close and what comes in the box? What application are these designed for and what design characteristics do they have? Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, I'm Mark. Let's take a closer look in this product overview video. To get this started, let's begin with an unboxing. There are a couple of different purchase options. We'll talk about that more in a little bit, but this is the full component speaker set, the C6-650. Open up the packaging. On the top, we get warranty information and this open spread style manual. In this first tray here, we get a pair of passive crossovers. Underneath those, we'll find some associated mounting hardware. Along with these, in those baggies is the tweeter mounting bracket, the associated hardware and wiring connections. Included are two different styles of tweeter mounting cups. The first here, this is a surface mount style cup. As you can imagine, this is going to be simply mounted against a surface and it's going to allow the tweeter to twist into place. And JL Audio has also provided us with a flush mount style cup. In this case, the tweeter is going to go inside, lock into place, but you would drill a hole in order to mount this flush into a panel. Let's just get these out of the way for a moment so we can get at the tweeters themselves, which have wiring affixed to them. But there it is, the one inch Silk Dome C6 tweeter. We of course have a lot more to talk about here, but just to continue the unboxing, let's remove this tray. I just noticed that the packaging does have a nice thick piece of foam on top here to protect the speakers in transit to you. And this cardboard piece here as well also has a similar foam attached. Underneath that, we find some included speaker grills for the six and a half inch woofers. You'll note that the grills have a little indentation on them here, more on that in just a second. And if we pull these out, we can see the six and a half inch woofers. Each woofer has a trim ring. These trim rings are what the grill will actually mount into. And beneath that, we will find the C6 six and a half inch component woofer. Underneath each of the woofers is associated mounting hardware and again, electrical connectors. And over here in these baggies, these have a small stick on jail audio emblem, which is what goes in this little indentation here. The reason it's included separately is that way you can change the orientation depending on how you mount the grill, or you could even use this emblem elsewhere in your install. Before we get into all the detailed specs and engineering design of these drivers, let's first talk about the available purchase options. So of course, first off, you could get everything in this available kit that we just did the unboxing on. The application that you would wanna get this kit for is if you want to use the passive crossovers. The passive crossover has this protective cover that we can remove, and that's going to give us access to all of these wiring terminals here. This is going to be your signal coming into the passive crossover, whether it be from an amplifier or from your factory source unit. And that signal coming in is then going to be divided up into a woofer and a tweeter output. Something personally that I wanted to point out to you guys is that this passive crossover network is particularly designed for this exact model. If you see inside there, it says C6-650. This is engineered exclusively for this speaker set. I grabbed this passive crossover here. This is from the C2 series of speakers and I just wanted to show that they are in fact different, but what I do like is that they're also the same when it comes to the actual mounting pattern. The reason I find this advantageous is let's imagine that you have a set of C2 speakers in your car right now and you want to upgrade in the future if you wanna swap in this new passive crossover network, you still have the same exact mounting pattern and you also have the same layout when it comes to wiring. So all you have to do is swap in the new crossover, bolt it up into that same exact spot and just reconnect the wires. Now, of course, you should always, always double check and verify that all your speaker wire connections are in fact correct but I also double checked even on this C3 crossover here. Same thing, same mounting pattern, same wiring connections. 
Personally, I really appreciate that even though each crossover network is slightly different, installation-wise, they are very similar. Back to available purchase options, what's unique about the C6 lineup is it's a lot like the C7 lineup. Let's say that we know that we want to run these drivers in an active system configuration. In that case, we're not going to need the passive crossover network. Just in case you don't know what running active means, what that means is we're going to use crossovers built into the amplifier or into our digital signal processor in order to bandwidth limit each of these drivers and what that means is we wouldn't be using the passive crossover network. We'd be using an active crossover network to limit the range of frequencies sent to each of these drivers. So if you are going that route you can get the C6 component woofer which is the C6-650CW or you can get the component tweeter which is the C6-100CT and you can buy those a la carte individually. If you're planning on running a pair of these speakers active anyhow, this is definitely something worth considering because by getting rid of these passive crossovers and purchasing in that separate purchase option, at the time of making this video, you're going to save yourself about a hundred bucks. Also, just generally speaking, it's nice that we have access to the ability to purchase these as one-off if need be, but there is one thing that I want to point out really quick on the component tweeter, and that's that if you buy the tweeter individually, it's going to include one 15 microfarad tweeter protection capacitor. That's this guy right here. It's the same capacitor that's included with the C7 tweeter. And the purpose of this is for guarding against any transient electrical pops that could possibly pass to the tweeter. I want to stress that this is not meant to be a high pass filter for your tweeter. You're still going to want to set that up on your amplifier or in your DSP. This is purely meant to protect the tweeter. Details on exactly how you wire that in are included in the manual. Now let's get into the good stuff and talk about specs. In terms of continuous power handling, the woofer is rated at 100 watts RMS and the tweeter is rated at 80 watts RMS. But this is important, keep in mind with dynamic music, it's unlikely you would be providing that much power to these drivers. So I love that in JL specs, they list a recommended amplified power value, which in this case is between 30 and 150 watts RMS for the woofers and 10 to 150 watts for the tweeters. This is valuable because it gives you a better idea what amplifiers are going to pair well with these speakers, especially when you go to run active. Now both the component woofer and the component tweeters have a nominal impedance of 4 ohms, and the woofer has an FS of about 53 hertz with a frequency response of plus or minus 3 dB from 55 hertz up to 6 kilohertz. Now the tweeter on the other hand has an FS of 1500 hertz with a frequency response from 3 kilohertz up to 21 kilohertz. Now now let's talk about the engineering and design of each of these speakers. Now if you're familiar with JL Audio's flagship C7 speaker line, you're definitely going to see some familiar technology here as we go through the different features on the C6 woofer. Let's start with appearance. On the front side here, we have a nice stealth black look. I actually really like this. When this is behind a door panel, you're not going to see anything obtrusive. It's just a nice neutral appearance that we expect in a vehicle. When we turn this driver over and look at the backside, you are going to see a little bit more of a machined kind of silver appearance embellishment here, along with this deep blue colored C6 branded sticker. Now right away you're going to notice that the terminals on this woofer are on opposing sides. They're not next to each other and this is actually advantageous. The advantage of having the terminal on each side like this is your spider which has the lead woven into it. That's that yellow suspension material that you see on the inside there. It allows the spider to stay balanced from side to side. You're not going to have any distortion because the spider is slightly different on one side of the speaker. Now the motor plate design here is forged and machined with DMA optimized geometries to create linear motor force under power. JL Audio's DMA optimized technology is proprietary and ultimately it allows them to design a motor that has outstanding mid-bass impact, is linear, and has low distortion. Now we talked a little bit about the spider, but it is worth noting it is of large diameter, it has a linear profile, and it is designed for linear compliance and outstanding excursion capability. The center cap here is designed to optimize the high frequency response of the woofer for seamless transition to the tweeter's response, and this driver also features 
features an oversized voice coil for extended power handling capability, which minimizes thermal compression and distortion at high listening levels. The frame here is not plastic, it's definitely metal. This is a cast alloy frame. It's in fact very similar to the C7 woofer, and although you can't really see it here, it also features JL Audio's elevated frame cooling technology. The cone material is a mineral-filled polypropylene, which is quite common in the JL Audio speaker lines. It's a very light material, which allows the speaker to be more efficient, but also with the proper design geometry, which JL Audio, of course, tests for and designs extensively, it is very rigid, which prevents distortion of the audible performance of the driver. Next up, the 1-inch C6 Silk Dome Component Tweeter. Appearance-wise, we once again have that nice stealth black look. In case you were wondering, no, the grill is not removable. The grill is, in fact, permanently attached. And depending on which of the tweeter mounts you use, you're either going to have the little JL Audio logo down below, or you're going to have no JL Audio logo at all. Now, design-wise, this is an edge-driven, pure silk dome design. This delivers smooth, high-frequency performance with excellent off-axis response and damping. These have a neodymium motor which delivers high magnetic flux from a compact motor design. Internally, there is ferrofluid cooling and damping which improves reliability and response smoothness. So now that I've had a few weeks of time to spend with these and audition them, let's talk about their performance. First off, on the component woofer, these have a solid amount of mid-bass. The dynamic motor analysis that JL Audio does to design their speakers really shines through. Especially in amplified situations, I find that this woofer just keeps asking for more. In terms of excursion, the woofer has a similar amount to the old ZR series, if you guys are familiar with those, and with all the borrowed technologies from the C7 line, the technology really shines through. These play very linearly and with incredible accuracy that the high-end line is known for. In terms of the tweeter, these are very smooth sounding thanks to that silk dome design. I found myself comparing it to the old C5 line in this case, and with the larger size, they definitely have more output, but they, again, are very, very smooth, just like that smooth performance that you could expect from the C5 lineup. In my opinion, the C6 tweeter here, though, is definitely more dynamic, and it's definitely not fatiguing at all to listen to. Installed correctly, it is really an enjoyable experience. Overall, my personal suggestion, even though these sound incredible with the passive crossovers, if you can, if your budget allows for it, or maybe even plan it for a future upgrade, do plan on running these drivers active. Pair them with a DSP-controlled amplified signal, and you are going to have yourself one impressive system. Regardless of how you plan to run these, these definitely slide in perfectly to that target of the mid to high-end category. To learn more about the C6 speaker lineup, check out the links down in the video description. A special thanks to JL Audio for sponsoring this video, and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.